couple thoughts to share. First, being in a place like Lisbon where there's a lot of random things to see, like it's very artsy, there's museums, there's gardens, lots to eat. I feel walking around solo here, I felt quite a bit of indecision around how to spend my time this afternoon before I go inside to do a little bit of work. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter what I do. I mean, as long as I do a couple things that are intriguing, get me thinking, give me a sense of where I'm at, and that's all that's really necessary. And I think when you are visiting a new place, especially with a compressed timeline, then it's easy to put pressure on yourself to see a bunch, but then you lose sight of the value that you can get in the details. Whether you're traveling, just going about your daily life, the question of what are you seeking is important for all of us to continually ask ourselves to understand what's the direction that we're headed in and what's the direction we want to head in and are those things in alignment. In my case, I travel. I want to try to make connections and experience the place authentically and also learn a lot about myself. Granted, I'm traveling quickly as I currently am, it's pretty difficult to do so. So I have to find other ways to slow down, like sitting in parks and just reading and trying to curate certain content consumption. Like, I think like museums are really helpful for that because you, it's really a mirror for how you process different artworks and how they resonate because it's a reflection of what's going on for you internally. Um, same thing with reading based off of the content that you're consuming. Like same with like online content consumption as well. So anyways, yeah, I could talk on and on about that, but what are you seeking? It's really a question of intentionality and trying to live in accordance with the things that ultimately matter to you. And while our core values, once established, tend to not change too much over the long term, are the way in which they manifest in different contexts that might change. So for example, say that you're a writer, uh, maybe in one chapter of life you write poetry, in another you write essays, in another you write books, whatever it might be. And so I think that question is a really important prompt to ask ourselves because it enables you to check in different contexts to make sure that you're spending your time most appropriately. Um, so yeah, again, and I'm trying to figure that out in this chapter <laughs> as I'm traveling, which um, I have general things that I'll continue to share, but it's interesting to try to calibrate towards those things as I'm bouncing around different locations. All right, final thought for now. I'm on the Avenida de Libertad, and I'll just say that as you go further southeast where there's more tourists, there's absolute chaos, but I'm further northwest. And it's pretty serene, it's very green, very peaceful, lots of benches to sit at, so really nice spot. There's a lot of shops around too, that's your thing, but yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, the thoughts are really flowing now, so final, final thought. Just wanted to share that earlier today, I was kind of feeling all over the place, not as grounded, a little bit more anxious, especially after walking through some of the busier areas. So I felt really, really all over the place. And just want to share, man, I just sat down and just said a little prayer and did a little meditation and just spent some time breathing, some box breathing, counting out my breaths, read for a little bit and really turned my day around. Um, so just don't forget how valuable it can be in any given moment, especially when you're feeling all over the place. It's funny, those are the moments where it's hardest to calibrate, but if you can just sit down, focus on your breathing, let your nervous system reset, then it can completely change the trajectory of your day, even if you just spend literally one or two minutes doing so. All right, the big thing in Lisbon is to get these pastel donatas. Ready? Cheers, guys. Cheers. The texture is really good. I haven't had other pastel donatas yet. It's the first one. But if you're in the timeout market, 
this one's really good. The structural integrity is solid, a little flaky, not too sweet. It's solid. It's like a 8.5 out of 10. Really good. This uh, is made out of sand. So impressive. So, on the water, walking along the river. Pretty nice at night. Charles, what do you think people should know about Lisbon? People should come prepared to walk a lot. And on prepared hills. to like walk, <laughs> yeah, walk on hills. Uh, there's a lot to do here. There's like a lot of shops, a lot of things to see. I feel like it's pretty similar to San Francisco or New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just prepare, be prepared to like walk a lot. <laughs> just bounce around and just vibe, get some yeah. good food, come with friends and hang. For sure, yeah, I agree. It's good, for sure. Absolutely loving the viewpoints here in Lisbon. Um, sitting next to another one that I'm about to check out, I thought I'd sit down on this park bench and share some more thoughts on what it's been like wandering and roaming around the city, given that there haven't been as many specific landmarks or sites that I've really wanted to prioritize while here. I mean, uh, typically I, I do get a lot of value from walking tours and learning about the history of a European city. I mean, I think walking tours can be hit or miss. Generally, they're better. If, there's more storytelling involved rather than fact sharing, but I digress. Here, I just wanted to get a feel for Lisbon while letting my thoughts roam free, because that's kind of where I'm at at this point in my travels, just wanting to let my thoughts wander, uh, wanted to um, try to stay grounded, which is hard given how fast I've been traveling. And so I didn't really want to overload myself with information. Um, and so I wanted to take in the essence of Lisbon um, while taking it easy for myself. And Lisbon is definitely a good place for roaming, a good place for eating. Um, it's beautiful looking out of the river and I, I love the viewpoints. It's nice to take in the orange rooftops and just stop and observe uh, the city since uh, especially with all the viewpoints, there's a lot of beauty around to observe. So yeah, generally positive sentiments and I've enjoyed just wandering. Also, the seafood here has been absolutely delightful. I've gotten some grilled octopus, I've gotten some octopus salad, I've gotten salmon a couple times, uh, and it's all been so fresh, so tasty. So in terms of eating, the seafood is awesome here. Similar thing in that regard, I suppose. <laughs> Here on the rooftop of the Convento de Gracia, and I just walked through the church on the way up to the rooftop terrace here to get probably one last good view of the city before I've seen enough viewpoints here. <laughs> As I just mentioned, I've seen a bunch of them. But as I was walking through the church and I was thinking about the images of Jesus dying on the cross, which is a recurring image that you see in churches. But And if you're a Christian, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and died for our sins and resurrected um, so that we can have the Holy Spirit within us and connect with God. And whether you believe that or not, I think it's interesting to think about the power of reminders and visual reminders in that way. And when you're in church, these visual reminders, it's actually very gruesome to see these images, but it reminds you of that aspect of the faith. And it's really a testament to the power of curating your environment so that you can create visual cues that prompt certain behaviors. Um, so in this case, it's prayer or connecting with God. But in your daily life, it can be, you know, putting out healthy food on your kitchen or and just surrounding yourself with the right people or being in an environment that brings you peace, even if it's something as simple as like putting plants in your house. Um, because those visual cues, they affect our attention, both consciously and subconsciously. And that it really relates to what I was talking about sitting on that park bench with not wanting to overload myself with information with how fast I've been traveling. Because uh, it's really overwhelming and it's hard to ultimately capture all the information if you're just being pulled in so many directions, which it's kind of been the case as I've you know bounced around three different cities in just over a week here in Europe. And so I, I'm trying to find that balance of not overloading myself with information while also inevitably being around so many new visual cues and 
obviously things like journaling and even doing this helps me process that but i think ultimately it's a it's an important reminder that our external environment visually has such a dominant effect on what happens to us internally and the more that we can curate that in alignment with things that we want to do like for example even like i don't know living next to a gym or setting up your apartment in a way that gives you more space to um i don't know study or have friends over and have a dining table whatever it might be um that your environment has so much power over you in that way and it's important to curate that when you are able to so i suppose that could be a challenge for you watching this video are there certain goals or things that you know you want to do more of maybe it's like eating less cookies or um or going to the gym more those are fitness examples are super easy they're top of mind for me but it doesn't have to be fitness it could be work related it could be family related whatever there's certain goals you want to work on that there are things you can do in your environment to make it easier to do those things um, just a reflection point like are there things that you can do to better manage your environment so that maybe you have to deal with less temptation or you can be more focused on the things that you currently value or want to move towards just walking alongside the river now to close out this long day of walking i would say lisbon has a lot going on like i said it's an interesting place to walk around solo but i think in general, this is probably a place I'll return to, perhaps with a significant other or with a group of friends, um, just to like hang out and eat and relax. It's nice to be on the water and the seafood is absolutely spectacular. But with that being said, I am heading out tomorrow and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.